Hello from Jonathan and from me. Welcome to a new week on Anglia Tonight. First, it's been a harrowing day for pupils at Nipswich High School after they were shut in after reports an armed gang was nearby. Witnesses called police just before midday claiming a group of men, one of them brandishing a handgun, had been involved in an accident on the junction of Stone Lodge Lane and Mallard Way. Well, the police armed response unit was sent. Meanwhile, the pupils at Chantry High School were kept in their classrooms until the area was declared safe. Our correspondent Malcolm Robertson is in Ipswich for us tonight. Malcolm, a dramatic experience, so close to a school. Yes, a very dramatic incident for those at the school and indeed all those on the Chantry estate because that's been sealed off and cordoned off for most of the afternoon and it's only in the last half hour that that's been lifted. And if I come through the hedge here, you'll see that the legacy of what happened earlier is still very evident tonight. That car was involved in the crash. It ploughed through the hedge there and landed in the garden and is in the process of being recovered. Now, what eyewitness has told us today that following the accident, a number of men were involved in a fight and a handgun was brandished and shots were fired. Now, the police were called, the armed response unit was brought in and four men were arrested. Now, all this has taken place outside Chantry High School, you can see over there. That's one of the biggest schools in Ipswich and the pupils were kept in there at lunchtime for their own safety. We were informed by the police that it was a serious incident, um, so we made the decision based on the advice of the police to ensure that all young people and staff were kept indoors and then we followed the police advice about keeping our young people safe inside until we felt it was a reasonably safe uh, time so we could dismiss the pupils. So Malcolm, that's been the response of the school. What have the police been saying? Have you, have you had a chance to speak to them? Yes, tonight they're saying that four men were arrested. Two are being held in Ipswich tonight, two at Berry St Edmunds, all on suspicion of possession of a firearm. Now, the police have been busy throughout the afternoon searching the area. They've searched a number of houses, and I understand that a number of weapons have been recovered. Now, what they're also saying is that there is no link between what happened here today and a couple of incidents last week of attempted abduction outside a couple of primary schools in Ipswich. But in the last half hour, this cordon here has been lifted, but clearly the investigations into what has been a dramatic incident are continuing. All right, Malcolm, thanks for that. And any further developments, we'll have that on our late bulletin at just after half past ten this evening. Now, next tonight, they're stolen to order from parts of our region for crime syndicates as far away as Africa and the Middle East. But over the past eight months, 100 vehicles that have been packed up, ready to be shipped abroad, have been seized by police during undercover operations. One at the port of Felixstowe. Victoria Webb has more. Disguised by a sofa, TV and tumble dryer, Another 4x4, stolen to order, should be on its way to criminals as far away as Africa right now. Amongst the thousands of containers here at Felixstowe, officers have been targeting the ones they believe could hold other vehicles that have been stolen and given fresh number plates ready to be shipped abroad. Investigations over the past eight months involving police from across our region, as well as the UK Border Agency, have prevented these criminal gangs from cashing in on 100 high-performance cars, mainly Range Rovers, but they also include Porsches and Aston Martins. These gangs work fast. Some of the cars police have recovered were only stolen the night before. Operation Revel is the second part of an operation which began last autumn and has now been rolled out to ports across the country. Back then, 70 cars were seized. In the last three weeks, they've come across 31 vehicles. Predominantly this time around, we're actually recovering less. And from the, um, all the intelligence we've got so far indicates that we're actually having some sort of impact on the organised crime groups who are exporting vehicles from dwelling burglaries. These containers have been carefully packed. Some have been disguised so well that it's taken hours for officers to find the cars. With others, there hasn't been as much care. The priority, to get the cars inside and to the destination as quickly as possible. Either they will use and sell them on to make vast amounts of profit uh, selling them on in some of these countries, or actually they're, they're bought to, to order, really, and, uh, and, and, and actually end up with uh, criminal organised organisations uh, and people who may be duped by a criminal organisation to, to, buy, to, to buy probably inflated prices of, on a stolen vehicle. So uh, people do make a lot of profit out of it. 
As well as keeping an eye on goods coming into the country, the UK Border Agency says this investigation shows there's a strong emphasis on the exports too. These operations alone preventing criminal gangs from pocketing more than £2 million. Victoria Webb, Anglia News, Felix Doe. Well, it's been another anxious day for anyone hoping to fly abroad after a fresh cloud of volcanic ash over the UK threatened further disruption at our airports. Well, in the end, the cloud caused far fewer problems than first feared. Stansted and Luton airports both stayed open, though some flights were cancelled. But could the uncertainty in our skies, coupled with the fear of a strike by British Airways staff, be about to deliver a summer boost to our region's own tourist industry? Well, Rhiannon Mills is at Stansted Airport for us now. Rhiannon, how are things looking there tonight? Becky, we had those warnings yesterday that we could see more flights grounded today. In fact, things have been brighter at our region's airports than were expected. There have been some cancellations and delays, but generally things have been up and running OK. And tonight, things are fully back to normal. However, with that volcano continuing to erupt in Iceland, there are some experts who are warning that it could continue to cloud plans for our summer holidays. So could that be a bit of a boost for tourism back in our region? I've been finding out. This morning, Stansted Airport welcomed some unexpected tourists. Two Virgin planes arriving from Orlando and Barbados. Unfortunately for their passengers, they should have landed at Gatwick. Again, that volcanic ash cloud causing delays and cancellations. Travel agent Rupert Thompson is getting used to checking these ash forecasts. He says it's frustrating, but it won't stop people wanting their summer sun. The trouble is, you know, sitting on an Algarve beach, having a nice glass of wine and eating sardines is not quite the same as having fish and chips at uh, Hunstanton. We're told that the southwesterly winds that we have in the summer uh, will move the cloud over Greenland. We're hoping that when the weather warms up, the, the cloud will disappear. For some passengers at Luton Airport, that couldn't happen soon enough. 60 flights were cancelled there this morning. Later, as the ash moved on, more flights were able to get off. Now, it's tourism centres like this one here in Cambridge, which could actually have a bumper summer thanks to that volcanic ash cloud. At the moment, we already make £5.3 billion a year through tourism. Last year, we made £10.3 million in overnight stays. That was up 15% on the year before, the biggest increase in the UK. And of course, they're hoping to see even more people here this year. Because we are uncertain about the economy, about the ash cloud, all these things that we can actually say, oh dear, I'm not going to go away because, well, that is a positive effect for us. Have a holiday in England and see what's on your doorstep. I mean, how often do you go out and see what's round the corner? Rita Bushell runs a B&B &B near Fakenham in Norfolk. The disruption has already plumped up her bookings. She even put up one couple stranded when their flight to Morocco was cancelled. They were meant to be walking in the Atlas Mountains in Morocco. And in fact, they ended up doing the coastal path in Norfolk, which was absolutely lovely. Weather was superb. And they said, actually, they think they had a better time altogether. So, yes, we have had some. And we're also getting... Um, I had at least three in the last fortnight of people who are not prepared to travel at the moment and want to just holiday in the UK again. With the ash continuing to ground some flights, this clearly isn't a problem that'll blow over easily. But if your plane doesn't take off, tourist attractions here will be more than ready to take you in. Rhiannon Mills, Anglia News in Cambridge. Well, some news just